So I've been trying to stay consistent since the last couple of videos on my channel and I gotta say it's both rewarding as well as super difficult. I mean I thought I'd have to give up on it because it was getting impossible for me to make a scene as well as make a video for it just under a week but then I realized it doesn't always has to be a scene so today in this video we're gonna be taking a look at how you can make frosted glass materials in Blender 2.8. In this video I'm only going to be showing you one of the five designs I had for my frosted glass pack which is a part of a Blender creative package I have going on for my Patreon page. Anyway let's get into Blender and start creating it. So the actual project that you get on Patreon looks something like this. We have the five frosted glass designs laid right here nicely along with these two plain glass and acrylic shaders. The one we're going to take a look at today is this one. This design was inspired by a frosted glass design I actually have in my house which was also the whole reason behind the idea. This is what the material of each of these looks like. There is the frosted glass node here which contains every node for this design. It's using the object texture coordinates for the vector input to control all the generated textures inside this node group. The shader and displacement outputs are connected to the surface and displacement inputs of the material output directly. The displacement here isn't changing any of the geometry of the mesh, the type is set to bump only. The node setup of this whole thing is actually pretty simple. Let's go over some of the key elements now. So right here we have the texture generation going on, there's the Voronoi texture for the main design and there's a noise texture for the secondary noisy pattern that you often see in these types of glass. This with some minor tweaks is connected to the roughness input of a simple glass noise setup that I have here. There are a bunch of things going on here but the primary idea of the setup was taken from a Gleb Alexander video about making realistic glass in Blender. You can also use the glass BSDF, it will give you similar results. But yeah, uh, the texture is also tweaked a bit and connected to the displacement node to control the fake bumps on the model. Now let's open up a fresh project and start from scratch. We're going to add a cube and scale it to make it look like a window almost. Make sure you don't use a 2D figure like a plane because glass materials need the actual depth of the 3D geometry to look physically accurate. It's a mistake I made in my realistic balcony scene which I still regret as that little change would have made the whole thing a lot better. Now let's go to the shading workflow and add a material for the cube. We don't need the principal shader for this one so let's get it out of the way. Since you guys don't have the custom glass material that I have, you can use the glass BSDF node for this. It's not going to have the chromatic aberrations that you see in real glass but it'll get the job done for now so let's just use that. Set the IOR value of this glass shader to 1.5 to emit the refractions of real world glass. Let's start by adding the Voronoi texture for the main design. We're going to set it to distance to edge to get this design. Now we can see that it's stretching in the Z axis a little bit with the generated texture coordinates so let's select this node and press ctrl T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and change it from generated to object. Now set the scale to 3 to make the shapes a bit larger. Now we have the basic shape for it but we want to convert these straight lines into wiggly ones so to do that what I did was I took the vector connection right here and tried to distort it somehow. So let's add a noise texture and set the scale to 2 and bring up the detail to 5. This will distort the texture way too much so we need a way to control the distortion using some sort of an external value. So let's add a mix RGB node, connect the mapping node to color 1 and the color output of the noise texture to color 2. Now let's connect this mix node to the vector input of the Voronoi texture. If we we tweak the factor value of the mix node you'll notice how it transitions between the super distorted texture and the straight lines. A factor of 0 will only output color 1 whereas a factor of 1 will output only color 2. I found 0.4 to be the sweet spot between them. So we have the primary texture ready, let's now work on the little noisy pattern. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward, just add a noise texture with the mapping node connected to the vector so that we can tweak the scale later and use a high scale value for the noise like 100. Since this is going to be super small, we don't actually need any detail in it so bring it down to zero. Also I found that if you bring up the distortion to about 1.2 it gives a very similar effect as you see on real frosted glass. Now to really finalize the effect we can add a color ramp node and bring the black slider right about here to get this grainy look. And while we're at it let's also add a color ramp for the Voronoi texture and bring the white slider all the way over here to isolate the cracks and maybe we can also bring in the black slider a little bit closer as well. What we can do now is we can use this Voronoi texture as a mask to tell Blender where we want this grainy texture the most which is not going to be the cracks but the plain white areas right here. We can do that by adding a mix
mix RGB node again, setting color 1 to black and color 2 to the grain texture and using the Voronoi texture that we've just created as the factor for it. So this is telling Blender to use the second color for all the white areas of the mask and we're getting the grain only in the white areas. But I also want a little bit of the grain inside these cracks too. So let's take the color ramp that we have for the Voronoi, bring the black value slightly up so that it's dark grey, meaning that it's not telling Blender to completely use color 1, but also blend some of color 2 in it as well. And as a result, this is what we're getting. Now since we're going to use this as a roughness map, it will mean that the black values will be the least rough or shiny you can say, and the white values are going to be super rough. But we can see that the grains contain some super black areas which will be shiny, and also mean that it's gonna be see-through, so that's not exactly what we want. So let's change the black value of the color ramp for the grainy texture to a slightly less black color. Before we take this and plug it into the roughness, let's raise the blacks all together to make it a little less shiny than perfectly shiny. So we can use a math node for this as we don't have any color info yet anyway. Set it to add and set the value to 0.1. Finally, let's plug this into the roughness. Next up, we need to add the displacement to really make it look awesome. So for the displacement or height map, I decided to add a mix RGB node and put the last mix node with the finished design in the first slot and the finished Voronoi texture without the grain in the second slot. Then I set the factor to 0.1 just to soften the grain a bit. You don't really need to do it, it's a very minor change anyway. But after that I added a color ramp node and changed the black value to a dark grey value and the white value to a light grey value like so. This will make sure that our displacement isn't too crazy because it's flattened out. Finally, let's add a displacement node, connect the color ramp to the height input and set the scale to something super low like 0.03 and connect this displacement node to the material output. Let's see how that's looking now. Yep, that's looking pretty good. So yeah, that's basically the whole material setup for this design. Now let's set up some universal values so that we can easily tweak the material ac according to our needs later. First up, we can add a value node for controlling the scale of the mapping node. So we can change the value inside this node to control the scale of the whole material. We can also add another value node and connect it to the scale of the displacement node to control the intensity of the bumps later. You can also add reroute points by holding shift right click and dragging across one of these wires to organize your setup. For even more simplicity later, Later. You can also connect an RGB node to the color input of the glass shader to control the color later as well. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful or useful somehow. If you did, then make sure to give it the thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this in the future. If you're interested to support the channel, you can also check out my Patreon page where you can get all of these glass materials as well as more of these Blender creative packages every month. If you make anything using my tutorials, you can tag me at renderides on Instagram so that I can see it. Also, you can check out our Discord server where a lot of artists come to get feedback on their work, have regular discussions about art, and also get notified about every major announcement on the channel. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.